What do you do, The Miami Dolphins sure waited to the last minute to put that franchise tag on Mike Kosicki. And I'm, to be honest with you, I'm somewhat surprised. Um, you know, I don't even know where I want to go with this. We'll start in general because I felt like if Brian Flores would have still been the head coach, I didn't think the Dolphins were going to end up holding on to Mike Kosicki as their tight end. But let's let's get the most important part out the way first because it was this whole back and forth saga as far as what position are we going to consider what Mike Kosicki is. And based off the franchise tag, he is going to be tagged as a tight end, which will give him $10.9 million for the 2022 season if – Mike Kosicki ends up signing the franchise tag. Uh, but for the 2021 season, Mike Kosicki had 73 catches, 780 yards, and two touchdowns. And it's been extremely durable his five years with the Dolphins playing 64 out of 65 games. Now, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the whole Mike Kosicki thing and the Brian, if Brian Flores was the head coach. And... Last year, the 2021 draft, obviously we ended up drafting Hunter Long. We had Durham Smythe on the roster, had Adam Shaheem on the roster. There have been some issues with Mike Kosicki being in the lineup on a consistent basis due to his inability to be able to block consistently. And there's a, there's a lot of division in the Miami Dolphins fan base as far as like Mike Kosicki's value and I was I was on the table I was on the table where I was like you know what I can cut my losses with Mike Kosicki because there's a lot of concerns on this Miami Dolphins offense in general but Mike Kosicki calls probably poses the biggest issue and that's the blocking and most of the time when you saw Mike Kosicki come come out in a, in, a, in the lineup Number one, he would not be the starter for the Dolphins. And number two, when he would actually come out in the lineup, he would either line up as a slot receiver or some. very rarely you would see Mike Kosicki come out with his hand in the dirt, lining up as a tight end. And it came down, it came down to being a tail for the opposing team. And that's what I, I, and honestly, I felt like that was hurting the Dolphins offensively because of the fact that you don't want to make your offense too predictable where Mike is he's bet when he's on the field, we're going to pass the ball. When he's not on the field, we're going to run the ball. That's something that we don't need. Don't need. So at this point, in my personal opinion, moving forward, I know we're going into year five now. At some point, you're going to have to be able to develop some type of blocking ability. Honestly, I've stated this over the last couple of years as far as about Mike Kosicki. I don't think he's physical enough for that kind of for that kind of role. So I would have been cool with if he was cool with transitioning to being a receiver. I can see that happening. But now we're going to push forward and look into the whole Mike McDaniel situation, considering the fact he's coming from the San Francisco 49ers and what his what he was able to do with Debo Samuel. I'm pretty sure. Mike McDaniel was, was probably vouching for Mike Kosicki since he's so dynamic being being 6'6 and being very fluid in his in his route running. Like we could put him in a whole bunch of different different positions, but just get creative, get creative with the offense with Mike Kosicki in there. But as far as like usage rate, I that that I I'm curious to know what the usage rate is going to be with Mike Kosicki, considering the fact Mike McDaniel's scheme based off of what the 49ers have done and the Atlanta Falcons have done and the Denver Broncos have done in the past with the Shanahan's. I'm thinking like they need a very, very reliable run blocking tight end. So that's, that's, that, that's the most interesting part for me. Like he's got to contribute. He's got to contribute on, on some type of level in the running game. He's got to. So that that's that's the that's the real question there. Like, how is he going to contribute with the running game this year in 2022? But again, like, hey, I'm 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 shocked. I'm I'm literally shocked. I did not I did not expect this to happen, considering the fact the contributions of Mike, uh, excuse me, Durham Smythe, the contributions of Adam Shaheen, and then us drafting Hunter Long. I I probably was like mm, 35, maybe 40 percent. 
chance that Mike Gesicki was going to come back with the Miami Dolphins. But at this point, moving forward, is looking like Emmanuel Ogba is going to be hitting the free agent, free agent market, which I felt like he could be replaceable if we being completely 100 with each other. But that's a conversation for a different video. But uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, you know what it is. If you enjoyed the content, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. This is Great One DeVore. I'm up out of here.